Hey guys, Lady Liberty Stacker. Today is Thursday, December 17, 2020, and I'm back with another video of some pickups that I made and some more buying tips of cast iron. Uh, in my last video, I showed you guys, uh, and what you see here before I go further, uh, are pieces that I picked up last week. I think it was last Monday, December 7th or 8th, somewhere in there. And I've just been so busy with other stuff. I've had a lot of distractions and things going on. But I picked up some uh, pieces at an antique shop. Actually, they had some stuff in stock, which I was surprised. I did violate one of my own rules, um, but I don't think all was lost on that. And then, so these were from an antique mall. And that was Facebook Marketplace over there, that little skillet that you see there. So, at any rate, I hope you can see it's dark out, but I'm going to go ahead and show you what I got and give you the buying tips as we go along here. Uh, the first one here is, I'm trying to remember now, it's been a while. They wrapped everything up for me, which I thought was fantastic. This is a, uh, looks like a BSNR. It's a Red Mountain series. Red Mountain series, I think, was back in the 30s or 40s. It has a continuous inset heat, inset heat ring, and you can always recommend or recommend recognize the BS and R's with the handle they have there. It has a ridge that goes all the way to the sidewall and like a double layer um, dimensional teardrop handle. And these aren't necessarily valuable, but I, I don't think I have one of these in my collection. I have a, a three notch lodge. I've got a couple of a couple of Griswolds. I've got a Wagner, an unmarked Wagner, and a type, and one made in Taiwan, which actually is a great cooker. So I wanted to pick up this primarily for me, for my collection, because I think number threes are great. You can make little desserts in these and such. But anyways, this is a BSNR Birmingham Stove and Range, um, Red Mountain Series number three skillet, and you can see the three there followed by a B, and it's rather crude looking, but that's how they are, so I'll go ahead and set that down there. And then the next up is, well that one's really a good one, I'm gonna wait on that one. That was a kind of a surprise find. The next one is, and I got a pretty good deal on, on, on these two. Uh, they were having a 30% off sale on a lot of these. This one here is a number eight. It is a Wagner Ware Sydney O. It's the older style, made closer to the early 1900s. It's a 1058, looks like I, 1058I. It's got a heat ring. It sits pretty flat. It's hard to tell here, we're talking, you know, cloth, but I thought it was neat. These go for more money than the ones that came later with the smooth bottom. This has a heat ring, and I think I paid on this one. It was normally priced at $22. I got 10% off on this vendor. I got this for 20 bucks. So at an antique mall, that's a steal. You'd kind of expect a price like that at a flea market. But in Antique Mall, I usually have a piece priced like this, probably around maybe $40, somewhere in there, which is still isn't bad if it, you want it for your collection. But again, this is a Wagner Ware. It's a 1058, I think I. It's got a ribbed handle coming into the sidewall there and a teardrop handle. And it's got a heavy crud on it. Uh, I don't believe there's any cracks or anything, but we won't know for sure until it comes out of lye bath. But there you go. That is the Wagner Ware. I'll put that here. Put that one here. Then um, I'm going to go ahead and show you the mistake that I made. And yeah, we still make them. I got so excited to see this. So excited that I, <laughs> I didn't do one of my basic checks. But this is a Wagner, an unmarked Wagner, I believe. It's a 12. So it's a good size skillet. And it's got an assist handle. And it's got on the back, it says 14-inch skillet made in the USA. And it's flat. Doesn't move. But it has a little bit of movement, but that's okay. But it's got a smooth bottom. But what I failed to notice, or maybe it climbed into the other cast iron on the way home, was a little... I'm going to set it down. 
a little, see if you can see it, a little crack right there. Now the crack is in probably the least um, dangerous place. I mean, you're not going to really lose in structural integrity there. Most of the cracks I find that I don't like are close to the handle, and that's not good. But actually, it's a very smooth skillet. It's got the circular mill, mill work that Wagner was famous for. It's got the assist handle. It was made probably in 1968, so it's vintage. It's not the earlier ones. But I didn't have a 12, so this is not all lost with that little crack. I can deal with that. But this is going to be great to bake pizzas. It's a larger skillet. I don't have one quite this size. So we're going to go ahead and put that right there. And I was going to sell it, but I don't know what kind of market value it has, but with a little crack that kind of kills that. So because I needed it, and it did have a little bit of movement, I was more focused on the movement than looking for cracks. Shame on me. That was my mistake. Always movement, cracks. Don't worry about rust, don't worry about crud, but movement, cracks, and fire damage is what you need to look for, period. So there's that one, if you can see them all there. And finally, the find, the find of the day, get this one out. This is really cool, I was so excited. And this one I think was in the 20s too, as far as what I paid for it. This is a breakfast skillet by Wagner. You can recognize the thumb rest handle. This has the same kind of handle that the chef skillet has and the uh, 1218 square, nine inch square skillet has. This is super great. And this is actually a Wagner Ware Sydney O. It's a bacon and egg breakfast skillet 1101D. I'm going to set it down and I'm going to bring the camera around again so you can see it better. Wagner Ware Sydney O. Bacon and egg breakfast skillet. Now this one I got to flip. I'm going to flip that one. I'm going to keep this one. I'm going to keep the BSNR for my collection. Down the line I may sell it. We'll see. But right now this one is in fantastic condition. There's a couple scratches on it, but they're not cracks. And you take a look at the back here, and you can see the handle. It's kind of, uh, uh, actually, it doesn't really need a whole lot, but I'm going to go ahead and strip it anyways. But this one is just super terrific, and this one, they're very rare. So I was super excited to find this one. You just never know what you're going to find, and I'm trying to remember if it was all at the same booth. I don't think so. Um, it's been over a week now. Probably should have done the video before to tell you, but you know, this mall sometimes will have nothing. You call, you call, you go maybe a month, sometimes six weeks, sometimes two months, they don't have anything. Then other times you call and they do. Uh, they have new vendors come in, coming and going all the time, and then they have cast iron and they sell out and go from there. So this one is, is totally cool. So I'll go ahead and put it over here. And that was my antique mall. And I haven't been to the flea market in quite some time, but I've been going to Facebook Marketplace. I check every day to see if there's anything. Well, just the other night, I checked, and there was this skillet here. And it was just like that in the ad. What do you see there? Oh, boy, it's a large logo, double cross Griswold logo. And it is a five cast iron skillet. It's got the early handle. This is made from 1939 to 1944. 1945? 1944. It was before the war ended. And on the other side, it's very smooth. It's got some built-up seasoning there. It's that this black stuff, gunk, is going to have to come off. It's built up, and it's going to be repeated soaks and scrubbings between a lye bath and a vinegar bath. And this one is a number five, and they're actually more rare. The large logo number five is more rare than the number eight and more valuable than the number eight, believe it or not. But this guy got this for a steal. Um, he had it up for 35, and I said, would you be willing to take 30? I don't like to insult anybody, guys. You never do a totally low ball because then they don't think you're serious. So he said, sure. I said, great. And so I was going to pick it up, but we had snow in the area yesterday, 
And I, I messaged him and said, I'm not going to be able to make it out. So I said I would try to make it today, and which I did. And I asked him, I wasn't sure with the listing, I said, does it spin when you push the handle? And he actually said, no, it's, it, it sits flat. And so I had an envelope today with money in it. I put the envelope across the bottom of the skillet. As you can see there, it's pretty day gone flat. So we'll go ahead and take it into the kitchen and put it on the stove. And pardon the mess, I haven't cleaned it up from breakfast today, but if you put it on the range, no movement, no movement whatsoever. This is a gem, guys. Couldn't see any cracks at all. Uh, he said there were no issues with it. So again, you don't know for sure till you get it out of lie, but it looks really good. So I'm gonna strip that one. This one I'm gonna flip. And this one should do very well. Uh, these are more sought after. Uh, these number fives are harder to find than the eights. Uh, the sevens, fives, sixes sometime, but even the fives are... I had a slant five that went for more money than a, a few of the eights that I had that were slant, believe it or not. So at any rate, this was Facebook Marketplace, and I was just courteous to the seller. I asked him what he would take. I first asked, is this still available? He said yes. He had had it listed, I think, just that, that evening. And I said, any issues with it? And he said, nope. I said, does the handle, when the handle is pushed, does it spin? He said, nope. I said, okay, I, I, I'll take it. And uh, it was a porch pickup. I didn't even see the guy. I, I went and inspected the skillet and put money in the box and went on my very way. Very safe. I don't know if I'd do that if I were selling one. I'd meet him in a public place, but that's how I chose to do it, and I got the gem. This was probably the best buy of all. You just don't know, guys. Let me go back in the other room. Uh, where you're going to find the cast iron. I got great deals on this one, 20 bucks. That was about 20 in the low 20s, and so that was an incredible deal. It's very clean, very clean. Uh, breakfast skillet. We'll go ahead and take a look at that on the stove top. And I always check them to see if they spin. No movement. Just has to be cleaned, has to be stripped, has some scratches on it, but that was also a very good deal. So, but if you have any questions about this stuff, please leave them below. Leave a comment or question below. Give me a thumb up. So, YouTube will recommend more videos like this for people that are looking for vintage cast iron. Some unmarked pieces like that one. And uh, it'll help support the channel. I thank you guys for watching and subscribing. And go make it a great rest of your day.